Archers in the four pro classes at the Delta McKenzie ASA Classic have spent two days battling heat and challenging target placements in the Alabama woods. Now it's time to break out into the open and shoot for glory in the pro pressure point shoot downs. Who has what it takes to handle the pressure and find those bonus rings when the spotlight is brightest? We're gonna find out right now. Welcome everybody to the Delta McKenzie ASA Classic out here in Coleman, Alabama. Darren Christianberry, the ASA Classic is our culminating event here and it is, you can see it down there, the very last event. And among other things, this is when we have determined Shooter of the Year in all the pro classes. Tell us about Shooter of the Year, what that means. Shooter of the Year, we shoot six events throughout the year in the ASA. The Classic Tournament has to count towards Shooter of the Year, but what they do through the other five regular events, you get to drop your lowest score. So your best four scores throughout the season plus the classic, you add up your 40 target qualification rounds through those five events. Whoever has the most points wins Shooter of the Year. Here we're looking at Women's Pro Shooter of the Year, Sharon Wallace, uh, 205. 55 to 2024, Sharon crushed it this yeah. year. Yeah, and, and 2,000, so we said five events, 40 targets for five events. If they shot all tens, they would shoot a perfect 2,000 points. So that 2,055 means she was 55 up for the year. So she shot 55 points, including bonus rings with 12s throughout the year. She shot 55 up, which was a great score. That's the second in three years for Sharon Wallace. Tim Gillingham, he takes back-to-back shooter of the year in senior pro with yeah. 2107. Tim is a dominant force out here, you know, 2107 up through five events. That's <laughs> that's 20, what, 21, 22 point average per tournament. So killing it. And there you see Dan McCarthy. Dan McCarthy. Yeah, Dan is, Dan is a fixture out here as well. He's so tough, so consistent. Um, he, he, how many has he won now? Three, uh, four? Yes, three this year so far. Yeah, he's a beast. Kyle Douglas there in known pro. He's our shooter of the year. This is his first win shooter of the year. Yeah, so these guys know the distance. They use a laser range finder. Look at that. Kyle Douglas, 245 up through five events this year. That's smashing it. Well, all right, everyone. There you have the shooter of the year. I am PJ Riley. This is Darren Christianberry sitting next to me, Elite Pro. Welcome to the Competition Archery Media broadcast booth. And Darren, so we just dodged kind of a rainstorm here. We are ready to go out here, but set the stage for everyone where we are, these facilities, what we got coming yeah, up. Yeah, we're at the the Eva Maria Grotto in Coleman, Alabama. This is a place we come to quite often. If you based your travel plans off of the weather forecast, you probably wouldn't have come this weekend. But <laughs> until 30 minutes ago, it's just been hot and humid. We did get a little rain shower, but we had great shooting conditions. And now we're going to see who's going to win the Classic. We're out here on this ball field, uh, soccer pitch. Mike Tyrell always <laughs> likes to tell me that is referred to. And this is completely different from where you folks were shooting all weekend. Yeah, we shot in big, tall pines, dark, a little bit of hill. There was some terrain in there. Uh, they got tricky with some of the targets, very tight lanes. I mean, we're literally judging kills. We can't see the whole animal in there. So it's a difficult scenario out there. This is totally different, wide open, perfectly fat perfectly flat so uh, these guys will get cal these guys and gals will get calibrated quick and we'll see a bunch of bonus rings tonight all right well we will talk about those classes in a second but first up ASA president Mike Tyrell he's going to tell us about the Delta McKenzie ASA classic good shot inside out Archery is so much fun. The Delta McKenzie ASA Classic. This is it. This is the culmination of the entire year. This is the shooter of the year points coming to fruition, the, all the awards, all everything. This is it. We are at St. Bernard's. And St. Bernard's is one of the most unique places we ever go in the, in the season. It's a combination of a prep school, monastery, and a working farm, and as well as the, uh, the Ava Maria Grotto. So you basically have all these different things going on in addition to us suddenly showing up and, and running around the place. 12. And it's very unusual to be in a facility that you can actually see monks walking around in their, their black garb and at the same time us going out there with our bows. I mean it's it's really a unique place. It truly is one of the most unique places we have ever put on an event. 
and uh, we're so happy to be back. We've been coming here for about 10 years off and on, and we're so happy to be back. If here. you get stung, it's an automatic 12. Well, the monks have about 700 acres for their cows, and then we have about 300 acres for our ranges and our facility. And so this whole entire facility is, is well in the, almost in the neighborhood of 1,000 acres. It's been here since the early 1900s. Uh, truly, it is a totally working farm as well as a, a school. And so when we come in, we set up our ranges, we put our facilities in place. The city of Coleman is nice enough to come out and, and lend their assistance to us because it's not their, their property. But they're still good enough to come out and help us get everything set up. From the moment the trucks show up with 400 targets to the setting of the ranges and getting everything clean and ready, um, that's going to be available to be seen on the ASA Facebook page. And I think people are going to get a whole new different impression of what ASA is trying to deliver to them. Because it really is all about us trying to make an, a, an event that everyone goes home and says, that was fun. We enjoyed that. We are, we are actually currently on the soccer pitch I used to call this a field, but it's not a field, it's a pitch because it's for soccer. And this is a facility that was actually used during the 1996 Olympics. Uh, they had some teams that came over here and practiced, and it is a really nice facility. It's very unique to see a, this kind of a facility in basically a prep school. Uh, we're fortunate enough to be able to use this, this place, and, and we really look forward to a shoot down on Saturday night that's going to be really special. It's starting at 4 o'clock on Saturday. We will start the pro shoot down right here on the pitch. And we'll have the pros set up, they'll do the judging period, and then we'll start shooting. And one of the biggest problems pros have sometimes is trying to judge across just nothing. I mean, there's nothing, no reference points, no anything. It's just grass. And that kind of gives them a different look than a lot of stuff they do during the year. So that's another part of this that's so kind of attractive to us is that it does make them deal with a whole different thing. Because they're going to be on dark, they're going to be in the woods, they're going to be dealing up and down, they're going to be, they're, they're going to go through stuff out there that literally, there are some stuff that these guys have done this week that is going to be so great that when they get off that, they'll, the, anything less than that is going to be great for them. But now all of a sudden, they're, instead of dealing with this, this, and dark, it's like, here you go, how much of this do you want? So it's going to be a fun weekend to watch them adjust to all this. These two look like 12s. Yeah, they're in. It looks like yeah, we have three 12s. Yeah, we have yep. 2022 has been kind of a unique year. We started out in Foley, and we were back to pre-COVID attendance. It was, we were back on, we were 1,900, over 1,900 shooters, and we were just feeling good about everything. And then gas prices shot through the ceiling. Um, that kind of set us back. And then now we're kind of re-experiencing the COVID issues again. So um, it's, it's been one of these kind of years. Uh, we know that what we're doing, we're gonna keep doing and be here for everybody and putting on a show that everybody wants to see and participate in. Uh, but, you know, between weather and gas prices and COVID, um, we're still standing and we'll be here next year looking forward to do it bigger and better. name of the organization that runs this shoot and so let's talk about ASA I mean we're talking we're looking at the pros here that's what we're going to be mm -hmm. covering tonight but there are hundreds and hundreds of archers here of all levels all abilities all ages talk a little bit about that what is available for the general public out here at the ASA if you're old enough to walk and pull a bow they have a class for you I mean that's literally <laughs> it um, the the eagles the junior eagles I don't know if I get all the class names correct but the youngsters have a place to shoot then we have the the high school open we have the high school pins and then we get into all of the adult classes which start like a novice you'd have a 30 yard max then you have like pins 40 you have known divisions where you can shoot you know known 40 known 45 known 50 we have semi-pro divisions then obviously like you said, we're covering the professional division. So ASA accommodates anybody that can shoot a bow. There is a class for you to attend, shoot for money, shoot for prizes. You get to travel, meet a great group of people. This is just a big family, and I look forward every season to come and shoot every single ASA event. And equipment as well. Now, what we're going to be looking at tonight is what we call open setup compound bows with sights and long stabilizers mm -hmm. and stuff. But if you've got bear bow, if you've got bow hunting equipment, Olympic recurve, crossbow, 
I mean, whatever archery equipment you have, there's a class where you can compete with other people using the same stuff. For sure, and, and ASA is a, uh, they have a, uh, a vendor village, um, you know, sponsors of the tournaments, the manufacturers, you can come and test shoot bows. Lancaster Archery Supply bring, brings their big trailer to all these events, and if it's an archery product that's made, Lancaster probably has it. So uh, if you're just looking to buy a new piece of equipment, if you're looking to come out and, you know, join and see what ASA is about or, or shoot your first ASA, um, man, it's a great place to come and check out archery. That is definitely. And we, I've heard from more folks this year who said, I've never been to an ASA before. I, you know, I saw it on TV, thought I'd come out and give it a shot. So it was great. But uh, so now we're going to find out how these tournaments work. We're going to go to the third member of our team, Nathan Brooks. He's going to tell us about ASA scoring. So here at the ASA, we shoot targets that we can't quite see the rings on. So that makes it pretty difficult to accumulate score. So we're going to look at this target. This is the McKenzie Russian boar target. And these rings is how these archers will accumulate points. Now when they stand back at a longer distance, these are really hard to see. So this outer ring right here is eight points. So anywhere inside this ring will be eight points. If they hit the animal, it's worth five points. Inside this four inch circle is worth 10. The archer has the opportunity to call for an upper 12 or a lower 12. And then the big one is right here. This is the 14 ring. So if these guys want to risk and gamble everything and try and go for the top to win the tournament, most of the time they're going to have to hit at least one of these rings. And so if you miss a little low, a little right, a little high, you can get eight points by just barely missing it. But if you make a little bit of too much of a mistake, you're five points if you're up here, over here, anywhere in that area. So it's a big gamble. And so these guys will and gals will let it all hang out and you'll see some of them see some of them shooting at those 14 rings. All right, thanks Nathan. We certainly appreciate that Darren. I am ready to get this thing underway. Folks, come right back. We're going to start things off with Women's Pro.
Oh, I like the course, it's very challenging. But your arrow went off so quick. Good job. Welcome back, everybody, to the Delta McKenzie ASA Classic here in Coleman, Alabama. Women's Pro is up first. Darren Christenberry, what are we looking at here? Sharon Wallace is a fixture out there in the Women's Pro. She's 14 up for the weekend. Emma McCarthy there in 407 in second. Kaylee Johnson at 404. Aaron McGlattery, 399. Laura Huff, 397. With the bonus rings out there, this should be a competitive shoot down. We are certainly looking forward to getting into the competition, but let's take a look back just to see what we were dealing with about a month ago in Metropolis. And your number one qualifier from Dublin, Georgia, Kaylee Johnson. In Women's Pro, Kaylee Johnson came in with a lead on a solid score of 12 up. Kaylee did what Kaylee does when she has a lead, shooting what she needed to to stay out in front. Good, strong shot. Take no unnecessary risks, hold off the competition. That's a 12. Wait, that's in the 14. Whoa, snow no doubt. It. Yes. Wow. That's a 450. But behind her, Sharon Wallace and Katie Boardwell came in three and seven points respectively off the podium. Come on. Oh, Good that's grief. inside out. And seemed determined to do whatever was necessary to put the pressure on the second and third seeds, Emily McCarthy and Aaron McLattery. That's a good look at Katie. Oh, she went for that 14. Good for her. Katie shot three 14s in a row, including one on the longest target on the field. Now Sharon's heard the excitement. She may change her big, deep breath. Wow. Sharon stopped a shot at full draw after Katie hit the long 14, regrouped, and crushed a 14 of her own to push one point ahead of Katie and take second place with Katie finishing third. I just try the hardest that I can. I, I'm very dedicated. I love the sport and I'm gonna give it my all. But after going all year without winning a tournament and then this year, a bunch of seconds and thirds and every shoot down, it just, it just finally feels good to win one. So let's get started this evening. We're gonna start with the women's pro division. And in fifth place, from Clarksville, Tennessee, shooting for Matthews, Miss Laura Huff. And in fourth place, from Marston, Saskatchewan, shooting for Hoyt, Miss Erin McGlattery. And in third place, from Dublin, Georgia, shooting for Matthews, Miss Kaylee Johnston. And your second place qualifier, from Wazika, Wisconsin, shooting for Matthews, Miss Emily McCarthy. And in first place, from Townville, South Carolina, shooting for PSE, Ms. Sharon Wallace. Okay, the rules are very simple. If they want to tell the All right, Darren, so the field of play out here, we got five targets. Tell us what we're going to be doing, how the cycle works. Target number one is a Black Panther. Target number two looks to be the Wolverine. Target number three is the Cinnamon Bear or Brown Bear. Target four is what Nathan showed you, the Russian Boar. And target number five is the Large HD Deer. Each lady's going to shoot one arrow. They're going to show the score. They're going to rotate one box after five arrows. Anybody that's within 10 points of the leader will get to shoot a sixth and potentially final arrow. And that should tell you who gets first, second, and third out there. 
All right, we're looking at our fifth place qualifier, Laura Huff there. Laura's been in multiple shoot downs. She was rookie of the year in 2014, so she. Man, she looks determined right there. Oh, just a little low for an eight, it looks like, but man, she was focused on that. So, and let's talk, Darren. So, right now, our first three classes of the night are what we call unknown distance. Mm -hmm. Tell folks what that means. When they have a box that they're standing in out there, they're looking at the target, they're guessing how far it is. They obviously have a site set up that they can move to the specific yard, but they're looking at the target saying, okay, I think this target's 40 yards. They'll dial, dial their site to 40, okay, and then they'll aim wherever they think is, a, a, excuse me, wherever they think is appropriate, you know, trying to hit the 12, et cetera, et cetera, but they are guessing the distance out there. Right, so first up, that was Sharon Wallace, I believe, with a 10 Next on the... I'll try to keep track with some math here. There's a 10 on the Panther. And it looks like the Panther is a poke out there, too. <laughs> and the Cinnamon Bear. They're both long targets. Yeah, so keeping with what you're talking about as they walk to the next target. So, you know, the maximum distance is 50 yards, give or take. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, if they guess 48 and it's 50 yards. They hit two inches low. That's a good miss. Yeah. So, th these ladies, when you watch it, they're going to be dialed in. Yeah, and there's another 10 on a long target. There. That's a long target. And those 12s that they're aiming at or trying to hit are the bonus rings that we always talk about. They're only about the size of a 50-cent piece. So, right. it's not a real big target that they're trying to hit. A 50-cent piece that they can't see really well. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> so this is going to be Erin McGlattery here. Looks like she's just wide of that 10. And, and the 10 is what we kind of consider par. That's what yes. they want to hit. Yes, you try not to give points back. You want to get at least 10 or hit a bonus ring and not lose any ground out there. But it's tough to do. It goes fast as well. So there's a good shot at that line. We always talk about pulling the line. Mm -hmm. So the line is pliable. It, this is soft foam. When yeah. the arrow goes in, it can move the line. Yeah, it'll pull, it'll stretch, but the, the line or what they perceive as the bevel of the line has to touch the arrow shaft to get the higher value. Eight. So and she gets go. an 8. They right. give her an 8. What's that was Aaron McClary. Okay, gotcha. So that moves her to 407. And Laura Huff. And for Laura Huff. Eight, eight for her as well. And what that means, I mean, they're they're trying. They they've guessed these targets. They've written them down on a card, and they know. Okay, I'm going to shoot the deer for this. I'm going to shoot the black panther for this. When you step up and shoot one two inches low, for me, I start second guessing my judging. Oh my gosh, did I get them all wrong? You know, did I just misjudge this one? So there's a lot going through their head out there while they're guessing this distance. Yeah. I've You've been out there, and I've talked to these archers before, and they always talk about, you know, here at home, it seems like it's taking a long time for them out there. This is going fast. Oh, it really is. It really is. And, and I always say they're getting calibrated, and that is, you know, hey, I need to figure out where I'm at. Did I see these right? Because as we mentioned earlier, this terrain, this perfectly, perfectly flat grass field is totally different than where we shot the qualification round at. Yeah. So it does right. take some getting used to. There's Kaylee Johnston, our Matthews Pro-Am winner in Metropolis just a couple weeks ago. Kaylee's such a good shot. I talk about it all the time. She's a full-time nurse, shoots super strong shots, holds so steady. She calls a lot of uppers, and I think she hit that one, but I don't know if she called it. Oh, lots of low ones mm -hmm. here. Sort this yeah, out. Look, Laura's really low on that Panther, too, so she's misjudged these a little bit to get started. She'll have to make an adjustment. Oh, sorry, Laura Huff. Laura Huff, okay. That was a five. Five for Laura. Laura. Next up, our leader, Sharon Puts her at 410. Yeah, these, these are long targets, so this, this will be an interesting shoot off with. So. With some low arrows, it's going to be interesting. Good look at Sharon Wallace there. So all these pros out here, there is a speed limit to how fast their arrows can fly. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Yeah, that is a, I believe it's a 290 plus or minus 3%. So if you shoot an arrow any faster than 299 across a chronograph, if they test you, you will get disqualified. Right. 
that kind of levels the playing field, mm -hmm. um, you know, because some archers may be stronger than others. Some archers may be taller, have longer draw lengths. All of that affects arrows. Yeah, and that arrow speed, that's a flatter trajectory. So if you're shooting yeah. really, really fast, you can misjudge the distance. You know, it's not as critical. So they level the playing field by having a speed limit. Eight for Emily there. They're, they're struggling on these mm -hmm. targets right now. Kaylee's, uh, we'll find out if Kaylee called the upper on this one, but she seems to be the first one to have a decent shot. And I think, I think she called it. Kaylee Johnson. Let's see here. Looking for something special? Shuffling cards. Yes, she did. 12, 12. points. Great shot. That's a way to yeah. make a move because the other ladies, you know, obviously they're seeing the targets a little shorter than what they actually are. That's why they're hitting low. They're under judging these targets. So Kaylee, you know, with a 12 right there and some other girls shooting an eight, that's a four point swing. She just moved into second place. Mm -hmm. It is now Sharon Wells, 432. Kaylee Johnston, 426. And Emily, 425. There you see the score. So we flip flop. And Darren, as we always talk about, this is not just for fun. Yes. Yeah, they're shooting for tournament money. The ASA pays them a check based off of the number of entrants, but you can see their shirts. They're sharing with the PSC shirt. You're going to see Aaron wearing a Hoyt shirt. Kaylee's wearing a Matthews shirt. All these manufacturers pay a contingency bonus for first, second, and third place. So it's thousands of dollars. Thousands. You know, I think the women win 10. The guys win 12 or 15, depending on the manufacturer. So they're shooting, you know, the ladies are shooting for 10, 12, 14,000 dollars. The guys are shooting for close to 20 this weekend. So it's some serious change. Yeah, some of the ladies, you know, as you mentioned, Kaylee's a nurse. She's one who does work full time. Sharon is one who this is what she does full time. Man, Kaylee is killing it right there. That's a fantastic shot on that long deer. There's our leader, Sharon Wallace. And if you missed earlier, Sharon is our Women's Pro Shooter of the Year as well. Mm -hmm. Sharon got a little deep on that one. She, you know, you can see she let down. Something wasn't quite right, so she'll take a deep breath and reset. There's a good look at Laura. Nice, strong shot, shot there. That should be. That's real close to that lower 12. Sharon should have plenty of time. They get a minute to shoot each arrow. One let down you can do. Two you cannot. That's a good shot. Center. Now that there's that ring there in the middle. It is the same size as those 12, right. but actually that's 10 points. That's yep. not a bonus ring. Aaron McGlattery. So Aaron McGlattery at first on the Panther. 425 for her. 10 points is good there. That's a bomb. Aaron comes from Marsden, Saskatchewan, which is in the middle of nowhere, Saskatchewan. <laughs> I actually have been there bird hunting in the past and it is in the middle of nothing and it's boy she just this does not exist up there no she does this on her own yes, practices she's out in a prairie so she doesn't even have woods um, she works hard at it and it's where she lives doesn't help her. I asked her how she likes this humidity in these 90-plus degree days. She says, I like it. She says, I don't like the cold. I, I, don't, I don't know if I agree with her. <laughs> she lives in the wrong place for not liking the cold. Good for Laura. 12 points for Laura. Puts her at 422 if my math is correct. Still six points ahead of Kaylee Johnson. Here's this long cinnamon bear, and it is out there. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about distances when the known pro comes up. But we don't know how far these are right now. Yeah, sure. That's a good 10 right Absolutely. there. You're just trying to dodge anything negative on that Black Panther and that bear. You just don't want to give anything up. If you hit a bonus ring, you're gaining on the field because not many people, there'll be a few, but not everybody's going to 10 those, obviously, and we've seen that so far. Here's that Russian boar. Eight. It's an eight. It's Emily. Puts her at 433, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And for Kaylee Johnston. And I think Kaylee 12 this long deer. Her cone's sitting out in front of her. They have an orange cone that they have to place out in front of them, and it is. That yeah. Means, that means they're calling that 12 when they place that orange cone out in front of the box, and she called it, and she hit it. I 
She just moved that much farther in front of Emily, and now she's within four of Sharon yeah. with two hours in regulation. Yeah, when we came in to start this shoot-off, Sharon had a 10-point lead over Kaylee, and now it's only four points. She's gained six points and three targets. That's a big move right there. Kaylee is going to move around to one of the longest. We don't know how long it is, but that Panther is one of the longer targets. Mm -hmm. And it's the black, the black paint on the targets, especially in the woods, is hard to see right. definition, the muscles. You can see it's molded like a, a true 3D animal. And you're always looking at something to try to find a reference of where to aim because you can't see the ring. So it, uh, anything 10 points or better on those long targets is great. Good shot by Emily. Good look at Emily there. There's Laura again. We're going to see Emily's husband, Dan, here in the Open Pro Division a little bit. There's the Canadian girl. She went at that 14 and just missed it. Why not? Yeah, why nothing not to lose. lose. No one has shot at it yet, but why not? There's a good look at Kaylee. Oh, and she shot an eight tall, so she gives up a couple points right there. Hmm. For Kaylee. This is far from over. 446, I believe, for yep. Kaylee. Jeremy McLattery shooting and holding the flag for her, or umbrella for her, was Paige Pierce. Shoots women's known 50 out here and has won just about everything you can win in archery. Here you see Paige and Aaron. Paige is a beast in, in anything archery. Everything. Yeah, everything <laughs> archery. Eight points for Aaron there on that. We don't know we're going to get to hold those numbers, but he does a great job of doing that. 433 for Aaron's what I've got. Yeah. We'll be acting as our tournament director for this Page is what Vegas, Reading, yeah. indoors, outdoors, field, you name it. You name it. Laura's shooting that long brown bear there, and she made a good shot on it. That's just right of the 12. That's a great arrow. Good for Laura. 432. I find it interesting. Laura's married to open pro Michael Huff. Yeah. Emily's married to Open Pro Dan McCarthy. Sharon's married to Open Pro Jack Wallace. I mean, these couples practice together constantly, so they're always pushing yes. each other. And I see, I think it's fantastic watching all these ladies and men shoot as good as they do. Absolutely. She's now back with six point lead. 10 for Sharon, 452. Yeah, Sharon and Jack, uh, they're all over social media. They're constantly mm -hmm. practicing, showing you their targets, talking about what they do, how they do it. A 10 for Emma, which keeps her within 10 points of our lead. I'm sure it helps them pushing each other all the time in practice. Not not just Jack and Sharon, all the other couples yep. as well. Dan and Emma. So the gap from first to second went back to six now. Sharon enjoys a six point lead, which Kaylee was putting some heat on right there. Yep. Now Kaylee's coming to what looks to be the shortest target. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if she takes a big risk and goes for that 14 or yeah. If she really you know, now this is the fifth and five. Uh, this is the fifth arrow regulation. Yeah. So anyone within 10 points again of the leader will get a shoot a sixth arrow. So with the point spread being six points, Kaylee, if she really wants to win, 14 would do her well right here. But again, like Nathan said, she shoots an eight or five. She really doesn't have a chance to win. Right. She's already improved her podium position mm -hmm. uh, from where she came in. And that Wolverine is the, the closest target, but it's also one of the nastiest targets. Yep. It's hard to see lines. The 14 on that target actually is really small. Some of the other ones, the 14 gets a little bigger. But There's a good look at Sharon right there. She holds nice and steady. Super steady. What a strong shooter. Oh, and she plays upper, so I'm sure she called that one. I don't see her cone, but went. I can't see. There's a look over Aaron's shoulder shooting that long bear. Look how far that arrow goes up and there before it drops in. That's a poke. All right, Emily McCarthy on the Panther. Oh, she. Yeah, just that's just there. a tough, that's a long target. Tough to judge, yeah. hard to aim at, and. I believe that's below the eight line, but we'll see what the judges call it. That was a good look at uh, um, Aaron's arrow there. You yeah. can really get a sense of the arc. 
She, they, that might, that might be touching okay. the eight line, but I can't tell. It is. Okay, there you go. Hmm. And that was Emily. Oh, Fifty-one. That was Four Emily. Fifty-one. Yes. Yeah, it's hard to see these camera angles where that line folds over. There she was looking at Dan. We saw a quick shot. That was her husband in the background saying, I don't know. <laughs> Kaylee, Kaylee shot at that. I don't know if she shot at the low 12. She hit just above it for 10 points. Yep, that's a solid 10. So depending, depending on what Sharon called on this long deer, <laughs> she'll take at least a six-point lead into the final arrow, maybe eight. Here's Aaron on this long bear. We are getting some rain that's just starting to fall down here. It's light. It's not a factor yet. There's not a breath of wind yet. No. There was a little while ago when the rain came through. There's 10 points. 10 for Aaron. Aaron. 443. She won't be within 10 points of the leader there and unfortunately won't get to make the sixth arrow. Uh, I'm pretty sure she got that line. That is the 10 line, I believe. Yeah. Looks like it's got it cracked right there. We'll see. I mean, one of the issues with that is you can see those holes in the, the air holes from when they're making it. They have 10 points. 10. And so that can obscure those lines as well. You put it in an air hole. Sometimes when you look straight down the arrow shaft, you can't tell. You almost have to get above the arrow or below the arrow to see what it's, how it's distorting that line or if it's actually broke the line. Yep. Sharon did 12 that target. She called upper. There it is. Yes. Oh, that's big right there. Four, six, four, if my math is right. She talked about uh, playing the upper. She didn't used to do that before this year. Worked it into her game plan. Now she does it when she needs to, as well as aiming at the lowers and shooter of the year. Yeah, won a couple of tournaments, so it it definitely worked for her this year. She's got a good game plan when she goes out there. She executes well, and uh, man, she's got to be confident in her ability because she's always right there toward the top, always. And in recent years, she's been shooting the indoor stuff, flying to Vegas to yeah. South Dakota, and strong, shoots strong out there. She won indoor nationals mm -hmm. last year, not this past year, a year ago. A year or two ago, she won indoor nationals, which that's a whole other animal, that it, game. It is, <laughs> it is. But I truly I truly believe that indoor shooting through the winter, you know, when I, depending on where you live. I live in yes. Indiana. People that live in the north, northeast, they know what indoor season is because it gets cold. You can't shoot outside. But uh, I think shooting at 20 yards repeatedly and then putting the pressure of, hey, I can't really miss if I want to win because indoors yeah. is, a, is, a t is a game of I can't miss. And I think it's really elevated Sharon's 3D game, working on her shot all those times. For sure. That was a look at the Black Panther. That's going to be what we're shooting now with those crazy green eyes. I don't know why they do that. It just <laughs> looks kind of cool. It does kind of look cool. <laughs> so, um, Darren, so the target there, we're going to shoot a target that has been out there, but Don Bailey and Scott Parrott, our tournament directors, have moved the shooting line. They moved it up. Yep. And it looks like they've also angled it a little bit. They've come a little bit to the right. Yeah, so they, they do. They If they walk straight in front of it, the girls could actually look back at the box and go, okay, I shot it for this, and now we're seven or eight yards closer. I mean, it's almost a known distance shot, so they walk them at an angle so they can't just do some basic math. And, you know, you, it's an unknown class. You want them judging. You want them guessing. You don't want to really give them a number. But in some cases, they can do some math and get close. So... But you can see Sharon's eyes there. She's looking at the ground, looking up yeah, at the target. At she's she's picking out distances, and that's how she practices judging to figure out what to set her sight on. That was a good look there at her process. I she said she likes this being out here in the open, that she can judge a little better. Mm -hmm. She believes in the open like this. She, she always shoots good in the shoot downs. You don't see, I think there was one tournament this year where Sharon might have shot an eight on the final arrow and given up first place. Yep. But it just, that you know, London. that's going to happen when you shoot enough. Something bad, I, I don't mean to even say bad, but sometimes it doesn't always go your way. But right. the majority of the time she's out there and she's got a chance to win and she's got an eight point lead with one arrow to go. I mean, something, something bad would have to happen right here for, for Sharon not to win this event.
She All hit right. the eight. That was in London, Just Kentucky. Got gotcha. Cara Kelly, who was not competing yeah. here this evening. She was competing this weekend. Shot an unbelievable 14. That's what it was. To put the pressure on. Yeah, it. and that's a six-point swing when someone goes 14 to eight. So let's see what Kaylee does here. Now, it's just Kaylee and Sharon. Obviously, Kaylee can't finish worse than second. So if she wanted a gun at a 14, this would be a great time to do it. She did. Oh, she just hit over. just above it. Yeah. Yep. Overjudged it by about a yard and a half, maybe two yards. So we should mention to finish out our podium, Emily McCarthy is going to take third. Five. Kaylee Johnston currently is sitting in second. 14. It's not over till it's over. Uh, sure. It's over. That'll be a four. <laughs> 61 have. for Kaylee. It is over. You have won. Yeah, she's done. She doesn't even oh. have to shoot. That's it. <laughs> she's like, oh, I'm going to take it. <laughs> Don't need to shoot it. Why shoot it? Yeah. <laughs> this is what I call one of those double dip weekends. Yes. Sharon won Shooter of the Year. She's also just won the Classic. She'll get big contingency checks from PSE for both. So Absolutely. it'll be a really, really cool car ride home for those guys. <laughs> That's her husband, Jack Wallace, right there, of course. But, yes, the double dip weekends. Those yeah, are great. Those are great, yeah. <laughs> And we're not, we may not be done with those. There may be some yeah, couple more there of those. could be more. That's At right. least two more. But Sharon's going to come over to our interview area, and we're going to talk to her a little bit. She can feel the emotions there <laughs> from a big win like that, a big double win. That's got to be exciting. <laughs> So here she comes, and I believe she can hear us now. Sharon Wallace. Hi. <laughs> Double win. Yeah. How do you feel about that classic and shooter of the year? Um, I am just completely overwhelmed with emotions right now. Um, I've worked really, really hard, and Jack always makes sure my equipment's um, perfect, and I couldn't do it without all my sponsors, PSE, Hamski, Trueball, or Excels, Dan. I, I'm just overwhelmed and these girls they just make me want to shoot and practice even more and because they are so talented and you have to be on the top of your game to shoot with these ladies so i i'm just very happy sharon we talk about your consistency and you're always right there in the mix there's really not a lot more to say about how good you are at this game but what's it like driving home with like a bunch of several thousands of dollars in your pocket how's that feel it feels good and i'm ready to go get me some ice cream with extra sprinkles there you go <laughs> congratulations on a fantastic weekend and a great year sharon thank you so much all right congratulations sharon wallace yes that is her treat she has ice cream when she takes home the big win <laughs> Folks, don't go everywhere. We don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. We're going to have Senior Pro up next here from Coleman, Alabama.
Welcome back, everybody, to the Delta McKenzie ASA Classic Senior Pro is our next division uh, that we are going to see here. Darren Christberg, what are we looking at on that leaderboard? Mr. Tim Gillingham at the top again with a 413. Tony Taz a 410. Jeff Hopkins 409. I shot with Alan Connor today. He shot fantastic. And then Mr. Michael Braden there in fifth at 406. Only seven points between first and fifth. This is going to be one of those good races. <laughs> it is going to be a good one. Nathan Brooks, we want to get this started. Bring out our archers. All right, so let's keep this rolling while the rain is falling. In fifth place from Keller, Texas, shooting for PSE, Michael Braden. And your fourth place qualifier from Atala, Alabama, shooting for Darton Archery, Alan Connor. And your third place qualifier from Lacona, Iowa, shooting for Martin Archery, Jeff Hopkins. And your second place qualifier from Boswell, Pennsylvania, shooting for Hoyt, Tony Tazza. And in first place from Provo, Utah, shooting for Botech, Tim Gillingham. All right, Darren, Tim Gillingham, always a crowd favorite here. The guy knows more about archery than just about anybody I've ever met. He truly <laughs> does. He's just an encyclopedia of tuning and arrows and just, yeah, archery cuts. I mean, you name it, any archery game, Tim Gillingham, I would consider an expert at it, you know. That's the truth. So we're looking at Michael Braden, who has been a fixture out here, turned pro in 1996. And Darren, we have an announcement about Michael Braden. Michael Braden Braden told me to, pulled me to the side today before we went on air, and he said, hey, you want to make an announcement? I said, sure, what's up? He said, this is my last tournament. I'm retiring from archery. He said the fire is not there like it used to be, the work it takes to be competitive. You know, he's got a young son at home, a wife, daughters, and he said, I just don't have that burn that I used to have, so he's going to hang it up after this weekend. We certainly are going to miss him. Michael Braden's one of those great people in archery. Another wealth of knowledge. I mean, Mike's Absolutely. been doing this a long time. He's a great coach, a uh, super nice dude, fantastic shot. He'll be missed out here. Mike's a good guy. Definitely. Definitely. We wish Mike the best in all his future endeavors. Tim's taking a little extra time here. I don't know what he's got up, or maybe he can't. I don't know. I didn't know if he came to full draw once or not, but. The rain's pretty good now. Yeah, and the, the worst thing about the rain is just babysitting your equipment. There's lenses in their peeps. There's lenses in their scopes. The, all those water droplets just make things harder to see out there. Right. All right first and I can say this, too, because I'm over 50. Senior pro is 50 and over. We don't see too well to begin with. It, it, the struggle is real. I say that a lot, and the struggle is real. <laughs> That's a good arrow for Tim. That's a long target yeah. right there, and he's just off that upper 12. I'm assuming he called he that. He did call upper. That's going to be a 10. Don Bailey right there, tournament director. He's retiring as yeah. well. He's been standing that pose for years and years. If you've been watching, you know who Don Bailey is. Art Brown's retiring, too, from the senior pro class. The senior pro a lot, class. A lot of good old guys, you know, that have been around forever. That They'll be missed out here. Yeah. Good shot from Tony Tazza right there. Tony, I call him the silent assassin. You just don't hear much out no. of him. He's always in the mix. He's he out is. there battling for a win again. Yep, man a few words. Yep, nice 10 by Tony. 420. There's an archery shop in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, if you're in that area. The archery zone. The archery zone. Let's go. Yeah. Tony's there day in and day out, selling bows, setting them up. Big Jeff on that cinnamon bear, and that thing's a bomb, too. Oof, he's not going to like that. No. That one is out there. That is five That's points. Five for Jeff. Jeff. That's him at a 414. With these long targets, Tim's job, when you come into one of these shoot downs with a lead, they're hard to hang on to. I've mentioned that before. Tim's job is to keep it in a 10 ring, try to pick off a couple of bonus rings if you can, but just make these guys come get you. They have to hit rings to catch him. 
Yeah, and with the conditions deteriorating, mm -hmm. that plays in his favor. Ten points for Allen. Four, 18. I mentioned a little while ago I shot with Allen today. Allen's ASA number is 51. So he's been doing this since the beginning of time. <laughs> and I'm telling you what, he shot. He's shooting a new bow. He's shooting a darton. Yeah. And, man, he shot great today. I, I, he shot a really good round today. Obviously, he's out there in contention, came in in fourth place, and uh, Alan's just a – he's a good dude, and he's still got a bunch left in the tank. It was good to see him shoot well today. Yeah. There's a good look at the guy that's retiring, Mr. Michael Braden. Yeah, he said he's not one of those guys who's going to come out and just finish in the middle of the pack. Yeah. If he's not going to be competitive at what he knows he can do, he said, I, I just don't feel right. it. Yeah. You know, and it takes a lot of work, you know. I've switched hands. I'm practicing more now than I've practiced in the past 10 years. And I'm chipping away. But, man, you've got to really work at it to be competitive. These guys are awesome. And they they bring it week in and week out. Good look at Big Jeff right there. He shot in the IBO shoot off a couple weeks ago. Man, did he shoot good. He just smoked a 12 there. There's Tony shooting his patented two-finger release. He shot a two-finger release since uh, – as long as I can remember, he's been shooting <laughs> two-finger release. That's a good shot. That's that long bear. Take a 10 on that. Tim's taking his time, making sure things are right. Yeah, he's shooting a close one here, so he may want to go for it. If he called up or he got uh, it. Yeah. I did not see. We can't see his cones yeah. from where we're okay, sitting. First up, Michael, Braden, Michael Braden's up first here. It's going to be a 10 for him. Mm -hmm. 424, if my math is correct. Solid 10 for Michael. This is just enough rain to be pesky. Yeah. You can yeah. see they're trying to keep the umbrellas over their sights to keep the to keep the water droplets off their lenses. Tim shoots a clarifier in there, I believe. So there's a little piece of glass that peeps out in their strings like the rear, rear sight on a rifle. They're aligning that peep sight up with their scope. Getting everything centered up. And you've he called up. And that's it. Yep. Yep. He's got it. 12 points. Yeah. Right on cue. He's doing his job. 4.35. Tim's won four of five of these this so far this year. Wow. Obviously, he's shooter of the year then. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Tim Gillingham is our senior pro shooter of the year. If you we win, should mention if that. If you win four and don't win shooter of the year, you had a bad <laughs> weekend in there. <laughs> yes. So he's looking to get that double dip. Ten points for Tony. Puts him at 430. So Tim hitting that 12's increased his lead to five now. It's coming down pretty good now. It is. Pesky rain. Yep. We've been really lucky this year, though, PJ. We have. Weather's not been a factor, so. Nope. Good 12 there for Jeff. 426. It's a shame it is on the last one, but yep. we are thankful for having not had to deal with it the previous yeah. five. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's, everything's been, and when they have an indoor shoot off, weather's not a factor. Yeah. But, you know, here at the Coleman, this facility, it's outdoors, so you deal with the weather. That is an eight for Alan Connor. 426. So him and Jeff are now tied. There's a good look at the shooting line there. Zooming in on Tony Tazza. You can see that rain coming down. Yeah. And now with those long distance targets too. I mean, these archers have to think about that. They do. How that's going to affect yeah. their trajectory. Those arrows are catching rain as they're going down through there. Those those raindrops are beating down on that. So I don't think you have to add a whole bunch. You can see Alan shaking the water off his arrow right there. He wants to get that excess weight off that shaft to make sure he, you know, hits behind his pin or hits within where he's aiming because you let get too much water build up or it rains too hard. You'll see it rooster tail through the raindrops. It's, mm -hmm. it's beating that arrow down toward the ground. So... I don't think they'll have to add a bunch if they do or aim very high if they do right now, but uh, the rain can be a big factor. Yeah, there's a shot of his peep sight you were talking about. Mm -hmm. There is a small piece of glass in there. Yeah, he's looking through a little bitty hole right there, lining up his scope housing. Oh, and if that was him, he got that panther. Yeah. There's a bonus ring potential on the 
That's a Russian boar. That's an Easton Super Drive 23, so that's, that's Tony Taza. Tony Taza, yeah. If he called upper there, but first up. Is this Allen on the Panther, I believe, This correct? should be Allen. Yeah. If he didn't call upper, he's got 12 points on that bomb. And Don Bailey shuffling the cards. Yes, that's he did. A good shot, Allen. 438. I don't know if we've seen anybody hit that yet. I think you're right. I do not believe so. There's a good look at Michael, Michael Braden. Braden. Oh, he uh, went he at went, the 14. He went hunting. On his last hurrah, he's going to go out for. Can't blame the guy for that. Mm -mm. He's going to take an eight. Moves him to 432, if my math is still correct. So Tim went to one of the two longest targets out there, I think, at that yeah. cinnamon bear or brown bear, whatever you want to call it. He looks like he's at least, oh yeah, it looks like center yeah. 10. 10 points. Yep, Don Bailey's holding that up. Yep, for Tim. 445 on the, you take a 10, uh, there's Don giving a little pinky flare there. <laughs> <laughs> Hats off to our competition archery media crew. You haven't seen any blips yet. That's due to their setup and our equipment, and it is solid even though it's pouring down rain. I think Don's scorecards are sticking together from the rain out there. They won't separate very good. <laughs> Tony Tazza. 442. That helps him. He's now reduced Tim's lead back to three points again. Yeah. And somebody went for the 14 on this deer. Wow, that's got to be Jeff Hopkins. Oh. Low left for a five. Yeah. 431 for Jeff. Jeff is never, he never comes into one of these going, man, I no. hope I get second or third. He, that, ne he that's never his does. his son Scott there, who may be the only one out there bigger than Jeff. <laughs> Je uh, Scott competes in Open Pro Division as well. So there you go, another yep. pair who family members who practice together. They do. They practice, and I know they push each other. I know yeah. they practice a lot. Two Iowa farmers. They love their deer hunting as much as their target archery. They actually grow a few big deer in Iowa. If you yes. guys didn't know that, <laughs> some giants. <laughs> yes, they do. And I know a lot of people this year, we're almost to August. This is the last ASA. So this is the last tournament for the year for a lot of archers. Right. And as soon as they put their bow in the case tonight, okay. travel home tomorrow, whenever they do, they flip the switch and all they start thinking about is bow hunting. Bow hunting. Yeah. You know, yes, sir. A lot of these ladies and gentlemen are bow hunters. You know, they may have bow hunted before they started target archery. They may have, you know, got into target archery and then started bow hunting, vice versa. Um, but you'll see a bunch of these folks if you follow them on social media with some hunting pictures in the near future. Good look at Tony and that peep yeah, sight. Yeah, you, you can were see that about. little hole in his peep sight there. That's a great <laughs> camera shot. I guys. believe Tony just took a 12 on the longest target out there. If he didn't call upper, he okay, just hit the 12. Wow. Oh no, that's Michael Braden shooting at that. Tony was shooting at the deer, sorry. So was that that should be Jeff Hopkins. Okay, Jeff got a five on that long Panther. 436 for Jeff. Now we should come up to. There's Allen. This should be Tim on this Steady. He's going to get 10 points on that. Yeah, this should be Allen right here. Yep, yeah, 10 points through that line. 448 is what I have him at. So we're coming over to the cinnamon bear. This was Michael Braden shooting right, this Michael one. Braden, number 12, was called the bear. That's a long target. He went at that 14. That's a small ring to try to hit at that distance. Boy, he's just, just, just missed. Left. More left than low. Eight points puts him at 440. Next up, Tim Gilliam. Now we'll go Tim. 
Upper 12 is called, but I think he sees this. Upper 12 is called, Mike Tyrell said. I don't know where the arrow is, but we're going to find out. She's looking at the scores, too, I'm sure. He's just below it for a 10. Five. Ten. Tim in a 4.55 now. Big deep breath there. Holding on, holding on. Tim won the NFAA National <coughs> Field Championship a week ago. Don's looking back to see if there's a cone, so he and must he must have called up her. As he, moves to the next <sighs> he just got 10 because he hit the lower. Up. So 452. All right. Tim I he was aiming for that arrow. lower. Yeah, if he would have if he would have got a 12 there, that would have just reduced Tim's lead to one point. That would have made these next two arrows interesting. So they're getting ready to shoot arrow number five in regulation. Anybody within 10 points of the leader will shoot a sixth arrow, which right now there's only three guys eligible: Alan, Connor, Tony, and Tim. By my math. Yeah. So this is a big error. I concur, yep. I believe is what they say. <laughs> so Tony is on that long panther, number one, and he does have his upper cone out front. All right, Tony, so I believe this is the second longest. Good binoculars are so important out here, too. We talked right, earlier Tony. about the it's rings and how hard they are to see. A good pair of binoculars will take every ounce of light that's available and light up that target so you can see. You may not be able to see it when you're aiming, but you can reference, you know, I need to be behind the leg, I need to be halfway up in the body, et cetera, et cetera, to, to get a good aiming point. They're looking for anything they can pick out to put that pin and try to make a good shot. You can see Tim's peep sight in that ring. He's focusing, squinting that eye. Yeah, he's not happy with that. There's Tony. Ooh. Oh. He's low right on that, yeah. or just low. He called up, or didn't he? So he, he misjudged did. that one about three and a half yards. I'm going to say. Oh, Tim's Tim just fired that deer. He's going to think that's detrimental, but it's not because Tony shot an eight as well. Okay, yeah. First up, Tony Tony on that Panther. Eight points for sixty for Tony. The, the rain is just about quit now. Yeah. Next up. If you're in one of the following divisions, you're hoping this drags on a little bit so that rain <laughs> dies. <laughs> Moves through. <laughs> you want that sixth arrow. <laughs> There's the big man, Mr. Jeff, shooting at 14. Well, we didn't see his arrow there, but we can see it down range. There's his arrow. He got it. 14 points. We got one. There you go. 50. 50. There they are laughing. There's the son Scott. <laughs> Jeff is one of the legends of this game. Jeff has won so many shooters of the year over oh, the years. He's won so many tournaments. No eights, no tens. Very impressive. Alan Conner. Allen at that long bear, 10, 10 points, yeah. 458. So Tim, we know, shot at eight. I think he's going to go to 463. So anybody 53 or higher will get to shoot this arrow. And I think that's going to just be Tony and Allen. So Allen's wrapped up at least a podium finish. That's 14 points for Michael B. He's going to get he a shoot. He just pushed yeah. himself in. He sure did. That's how those 14s can change the game. He's at 454 now. So Allen, <laughs> Allen hasn't sewn up a podium spot yet. There's that eight. Mm -hmm. Tim, 463. Don't yeah, Michael Braden. Good finish there uh -huh. just to push himself into that sixth arrow. Yep. Jeff came in in third and was gunning for 14s yep. and unfortunately shot a couple fives there, so he's going to finish in fifth. Michael Braden will probably shoot first. Allen's going to shoot second. Tony will shoot third. And then Tim's going to get the last arrow to see what he needs to do to try to win this thing. 
That was the sound of one hand clapping as it held her umbrella. And Tim's one of those where if he doesn't need to shoot the last year, he shoots it anyway. <laughs> yeah, he's going to get them all in. <laughs> The crowd will get any time they can cheer on Tim Gillingham and get him to oh, shoot they're gonna, at that bonus ring. They're so yes, yeah. this is our sixth target we haven't seen yet, so this is it, the dreaded Javelina. It's a small target it you is, can see. And when the camera gets settled, when they get this target settled, look out there where that 14 is and look how tiny it is. So this won't be an easy shot if they decide to go for that 14. No. You can see it out there. It's, I mean, if the 12 is as big as a 50 cent piece, then that's not much bigger than a nickel. Yeah, yeah, a lot. there you go, you can see it. On a lot of these targets, sometimes the 14 is actually a little bigger than the 12. Mm -hmm. This is not one of them. It's not, it's actually smaller. I'm gonna say they did that on purpose too. Uh, we're gonna make these guys shoot off and give them the smallest 14 possible to try to hit. He moved it out. Pretty far in the field. We don't know where the shooting stake is yet. I see Don Bailey walking out with his cone. It's not. There it is. We're going to shoot from right in front of. There you see that stake in front of the cone, in front of the ASA sign. There's that little bitty 14. I don't have any idea how far it is, but it's not a gimme. It's not close. A lot of strategy going on here. Mike's four points behind Allen right now, so he needs a 14. But if he shoots at that teeny tiny thing and shoots an eight or a five, then well, Allen could just lay up and shoot a 10 and guarantee a podium spot. Right. Um, Allen is actually just two points behind Tony, so he doesn't want to risk a whole lot. If Tony would happen to shoot, you know, an eight or something crazy, uh, a lot going on with this arrow right here. This is not over yet. Tony just at face value would need a 14 to get in front of Tim, mm -hmm. assuming Tim would shoot at least a 10. Yeah, and Tim would be so, forced to hit a ring to win, yeah. so a, a lot a lot on the yeah. line with this final arrow. Yeah. That's what we like to see. It is, it really <laughs> is. Good competition makes it nail bite. You don't want to see bad things happen when people have shot strong all weekend and can, you know carried their lead all the way through. You never want to see bad things happen, but man, that's, People watch Talladega for the wreck, you know. Yeah. There's 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 a there's an attraction to that, you know, keeping it interesting. And again, I'm not wishing anything bad on anybody, but this is this is far from over. This is a big arrow for everybody. Yeah. None bigger than right there. Looking right, for that gentlemen. double First payday. He already has wrapped up shooter of the year, has Gillingham. I just have this funny feeling Michael Braden's going to go out on a, with a bang. He's going to try to shoot this 14, I believe. I hope he gets it. Because if he 14s it, he goes to 68. Tim would just have to hit a five. Well, he'd have to hit an eight to win if, if things shook out that way. But if he 14s it, he then Allen has to hit a 10 to time, and their tie would be broke on bonus rings. So again, this is this is a big arrow right here. There you go. Mike does the same thing over and over and Every over. Time. He gets his anchor the same way. He gets his nose to the string the same way. Super consistent. He went at oh. it. Ooh, oh, that's so man. close. That, that is, is so, so close. close. I think it's just high right of it, though. It looks like it's just. What a great shot, Michael over. B. Oh, Michael. What a good effort. I'd say when that landed, he probably thought he hit it. Man. Good shot, Mike. A normal size 14 ring, that hits it. Yep. So he finishes with a 462. So now Allen needs five points to guarantee a podium spot. And yes, the rain, the rain has stopped. There's Michael. Braden's last shot in the ASA competition. Boom, super strong. It had to look good from the stake. It had to look good when that thing landed. Congratulations on a great All career, right. Michael. We are going to miss you. So Allen just needs a five to guarantee third. He might as well try to shoot this 14. <coughs> Tim.
10. High left of the 12. Yep. Yep. 10 points. So he's at least going to get third place. At least. Yep. All right, Alan Connor. I mean, he forces Tony. Has to hit an eight. Yeah. Tony has to, to at least a tie. Yeah. 10 to win. And if Tony's trying to win, he's a 14 is so risky yeah. right here. It really That's, is. There's a lot on the line. All right, Tony Tazza. I'm going to think. Tony doesn't care about the podium. I'm yeah. thinking he wants the win. Well, if Tony shoots a 12, Tim still just has to hit a 10 to win. Right. And that 10 ring is the same size as all the other 10 rings, so it's not that hard of a, of a target to hit. Uh, but when you have to hit it, it yeah. gets a little smaller. Tony called upper, so that puts him in, you know, he's up by the 14. So let's do some math. If Tony shoots an 8, he he's ties. Looking. He ties Allen. Allen yeah, beats him on bonus ring, so Allen would take second. He just glassed the score there, yeah. Tony did, to see what, what All right, Tony, the lay of the land is for him. Yeah, if he shoots a 10, he gets at least second place. So it depends on where Tony wants to try to end his weekend here. And we have seen Tony come out on top in this situation oh, yeah. several times. Called upper. He got a oh, 10. Went for the 10. So he's going to bump Allen into the third right now, depending on what Tim does. Tony, four, at least 70. At least second, depending mm -hmm. on what Tim does. So Tim needs an eight to win. Eight to win. If he hits an eight, he moves to 471, and he will be a double dip weekend guy. You can usually goad him into that 14, but I don't think so on this one. No, I think he'll. He'll Too judge much this. To risk. He's going to set his sight and put that pin as close to center 10, and he's going to send it. All right. If he gets 12, good, all but all he wants is that again. 10. Come in when you're ready. He needs eight points to win. Okay, good. We'll start your one minute now. Going to go ahead and call upper while he's at it. Yeah. He may hit it. He's Tim Gillingham, he can do it all. <laughs> there you Center go. Center 10. <laughs> now he can breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Good win for Tim. He's so strong out there. Dang gone. We talk about it a lot. I know Tim complains about judging an unknown distance. It's a guessing game. It's a yardage judging. And it truly is. It truly is a yardage judging contest. Yes. But you have to shoot well, too. And Tim's a great shooter. So big advantage. If you can judge pretty good but shoot really good, you, you can stay in contention. And he proves it week in and week out. To win five of six events. You're pretty good at, at that guessing game that yeah. he always talks about. Yeah. <laughs> Tim's coming around to the headset here. We will get a couple words from him. And there he goes. Tim Gillingham's got the headsets on. Tim Gillingham, you're our second double dip for the weekend. Won the classic shooter of the year. How's that feel? Well, it feels pretty good. I had a lot of head games out there. <laughs> Started off okay, but uh, I watched uh, Tony shoot that eight on that Black Panther, and I just I hurried that shot way too much. Like, get it out of here, get a 10, and it's over, and I blew it. But uh, I'm just glad he took it easy on me. He didn't pound a 14 on that last target and really push my hand so yeah we talked about how important that last arrow was for everybody there tim but yeah. uh you know i think pj said you won five of six events this year is that correct um maybe yeah man what a <laughs> what a what a great weekend what a great year i got mad respect for you you're good at all these archery games even the yardage yardage judging contest that you talked about but man great weekend congratulations all right thanks guys good win there tim gillingham all right, folks, that is Senior Pro wrap up there. Great win for Tim Gillingham. Next up, we're going to come back with Open Pro. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, everyone, to the Delta McKenzie ASA Classic Open Pro. We're going to begin with next. Darren Christianberry, there's our leaderboard. What do you see? I see the battle between the teachers and the students. <laughs> Le Levi Morgan, Dan McCarthy, always in the mix and trying to win these things. And then we got three guys. This is their first shoot down. Ryan Jeffrey, yes. strong score at 424. Braden Jones, super nice, polite kid, 421. Indiana boy there, Benny Barger in fifth place at 418. This one's far from over as well. We are definitely looking forward to it. Nathan Brooks, let's get this started. Bring out our archers. All right, let's do it again tonight. So let's uh, look at our open pro division. And in fifth place, from Scottsburg, Indiana, shooting for obsession, Benny Barger. And your fourth place qualifier from Smithville, Mississippi, shooting for elite, Braden Jones. And in third place, from Shepherdsville, Kentucky, shooting for Matthews, Ryan Jeffries. And in second place, from Wazika, Wisconsin, shooting for Matthews, Dan McCarthy. And in first place, from Uniontown, Pennsylvania, shooting for Matthews, Levi Morgan. All right, Darren, as you mentioned, teachers and students there, those last two archers, I mean, they are two of the very best who have ever played this game. They are. We, we talk in, you know, certain circles. We're like, well, gosh, you know, the open pro guys, they're only shooting for three spots in the shoot down because you can almost guarantee that Dan and Levi are going to be in there. They don't miss very many of these. So, you know, it's tough for the whole class to just battle for three open positions. And I know it's not that critical, not that, you know, that's not that literal, but it's what it seems like because they're always out there battling to win these things. So I'm curious to see how Benny and Ryan and Braden handle this. Glad to see them out there. Benny, you heard the big cheer when he came out. He is a fan favorite here. One of the nicest guys you'll meet on the range. Golly. He went for 14. <laughs> Braden Jones, 22 years old. This is his first shoot down. His dad Brad's out here. He's got to be like coming apart at the seams. McCarthy went at the 14 too. Wow. I'm not surprised, but I, he's trying to make that move right away. There's a good look at Ryan Jeffries right, right down his shoulder. He shot strong all weekend, Ryan did. Good 10. So Levi shoots an eight low on the Panther. He underjudges a little bit. We got a race here. 436. I like this. I don't like that Levi shot an eight, but no. I like these races. Yes. Good look at Dan. Yeah, Dan McCarthy is our 2022 Shooter of the Year Open Pro back to back. This is his second. Puts him at 434, so that lead just stays two points there. Levi over Dan, still two. Ryan's going to tie. Ryan's going to move into a tie for second now with his 10 on that long brown bear, I believe. I don't mean to get ahead of the camera there, but I'm excited about this math I'm doing right here. <laughs> we saw some Ryan Jeffries fat heads in the stands yeah. there. I yeah. had not seen those there before. They there are. they are. Yeah. Right on cue. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a collector's item there. I like it. 10 points for Ryan, 434. That's when you know archery has made it, when you've got <laughs> fat heads in the stands. I like it. <laughs> Braden Jones. I don't know if Braden called it the upper or but he's got a high arrow there. I believe it's an eight. It is. You can see the ten line and the core line. That's a replaceable core, but he's well yep. inside the eight line, so it is eight points. 429. So with Braden, what I wanted to mention was for folks out there, he started uh, the uh, earliest record I have of him is in high school open and just shot his way up. Yeah. Open B, open A, semi-pro, 
worked his way up over the years, and here he is now on the biggest stage at 22. And the kid shoots good. He, he shoots does. good. Benny didn't miss that by much. No, just high. Literally a half a yard less, and he would have caught that 14. So 426. Good for Benny. That's minimal damage with maximum gain right there. He yeah. could have he could have done well with a 14, but that's just the first arrow, PJ. Man, I feel like we've shot like six already. We, we, we got five more to go. This is good. Wow. So yeah, so Levi Morgan holds on to the lead, 436. Dan McCarthy, Ryan Jeffries, 434. Braden, 29. Barker, 26. Levi rotates to the shortest target. I think Levi has to just 12 this thing. I know Dan tried to take the lead by going at the 14. Don't blame him a bit. Think it was a good play. Yeah. But Levi's trying to hang on to a lead here. Dan has to hit rings to catch him. So I think a 12 would be the play for Levi. But there's a good look at Dan. Super steady. Dan has won three of our events this year. Levi has won one. That bow doesn't move very much. No. That's good the longest shot. target. That's oh, a good he shot. Just missed that 12. That's a good shot. So this is Benny. Panther. 10. Just left to that 12. That's a good shot on that long bomb. 436 for Benny. <laughs> Benny's about as nice as they come. Absolutely. He's about as nice as they come. Every tournament, he thanks me for what we do out here, yep. just as nice as can be. Yep. He's just a good dude. There's that Levi Morgan 12 and I'm on cue. Yep. It's going to put him at a 448. And we should mention Levi normally is in the mix for Shooter of the Year. He had to miss two tournaments this year due to family issues. and. You, you only get one drop, so by missing two, it effectively put him out of the yeah, race. Yeah, he wasn't really in contention after missing that second event. Dan shot a good shot there. He just missed that 12 on that bear. All right, next up, Dan McCarthy. Eighth of an inch above it. Mm. At the longest target, so that's like a half a yard. Yeah, he yeah, yeah. Like, even if he just wiggled low a little bit, he would have caught that one. 444 for Dan, so Levi stretches his lead to four points, which again, with the 14 in play, four point leads nothing. Yeah. Come around to Ryan Jeffries. That's an eight. Oh, I love it. Interesting. I couldn't yeah. tell that from the first camera angle. Uh -uh. 442. So he drops back into third. I love you, kids. you great. All right, Braden Jones. Braden Jones shooting at an upper 12. Ryan, we should mention, was Open Pro tw last year. He was our Rookie of the Year. Looky Braden there. Braden Jones, who just shot that 12, is our current Rookie of the Year in this class. And he's only one point out of third right now. Wow. That should help his confidence. He, yeah. he broke the ice on a really long target there and got his first 12 in a shoot down. Yeah, he's real quiet. He competes out there. His dad's always with him on the range, and he, but he's intense. He's super polite. <laughs> he uh, is. Uh, he's on staff <laughs> with us, shooting the elite there. But Braden's, you know, yes sir, yes sir, yeah. yes sir. He's super polite. He's a good kid. <laughs> I'm glad to see him out there. It's good for him to get in the mix because I know he's got game. And yes. He's showing he deserves to be out there. Good for him, Mr. Levi Morgan. All right. 13 Shooter of the Year titles in this division, we should mention. 12 of them in a row. Mm. One of the best, if not the best, to ever play this game. Big old strong boy, good shot. Look at that. <laughs> On the longest target out there. <laughs> I love watching him shoot. There's a good look at Braden. 12. <laughs> If he called up or he, I think he shoots uppers. <laughs> That's awesome. There's, there's a good look at Ryan. Braden did call upper. Yeah. Oh, oh Ryan gets a twelve. Now we're seeing some bonus rings yeah. fall. All right, here we go. And Dan went for the fourteen. He did. This is going to be an awesome round. Just missed it. 
with the upper 12 call. So Smash this is Braden. It. Yeah. Smashed it. 12. Good for him. For Next up. He's trying to get into third, but Ryan Jeffries won't let him pass. <laughs> There's a good look at Benny. All right. Benny is 14. Oh, he went he into went 14, for didn't he? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, he did. I think he caught that eight line, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Solid in the eight. 444. Benny was in a nail biter at the end. He had to have some misses and some bonus rings and all that because there were other people, other archers around him, and it came down to the last target. He was done. He was waiting. And on the last target, an archer shot a five, and that allowed Benny to get wow. in for his first shoot down It's ever. never over till it's over. Nope. And a 12 for Levi. For 60. On the longest target. And when we Here's we go for going at that 14. Boy, he's trying to get in the mix and trying to win it. And he, yeah. And he is just, yeah, just golly, out. just low left. That's going to be an eight, I believe. 452, I think. Here's yep. Don Bailey. Official. Yeah. We'll note, or I'll note, we started shooting this morning at 7.30 a.m. Central Time. Right. A 40 yeah, target round on. takes about three and a half hours, so well, we would have wrapped up at about 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. And then we started to shoot down, what, 4.30, 5.30, yeah. 5.30 Eastern-ish, right. you know? Yeah. So these archers have all had a big, long break today. Oh, Ryan called up her on that. Oh, so he gets a 10. 4.52. So they've all... So. So Braden Jones has slid into second place. <laughs> That's so awesome. I guess point of all that babbling I did there is these archers have had a long break. So yes. it's it's hard. They, they do have a warm-up bag where they can loosen up, but they've had a long break today and on a hot day, and it's hard to get back in the groove sometimes out there. That humidity down here, Coleman, Alabama, boy, it just – takes the life out of you. You can tell Braden lives in Mississippi. He's used to it because he's on long he's pants and long sleeves. <laughs> yeah, right. So he's like, yeah, it's not hot. This is normal. <laughs> Let's see if Levi can continue this 12 streak here. He looks pretty determined to me. Yeah, he does. Boom, strong shot, straight that's left. A 10. That's, that's okay for him, I'm sure. He, d he said he never likes this guy behind him. Yeah. Dan's dangerous. Oh, and he That's got why. that one. That's why he's dangerous. <laughs> he just got that one. Golly. <laughs> I mean, he's guessing that to within a couple right, of feet to up. hit that ring there Ryan on that Jeffries. long target. Yeah. Ryan Jeffries lands a 10 he on called that up Panther. Foul. Yeah, so he's, he's like under judging those long targets Ryan. a little bit. Good 10 by Ryan. Next up, Braden Jones. And Braden Jones, you know, he comes in with an uneven number, 421, which means he shot a five this mm -hmm. weekend, mm -hmm. yeah. which is not unheard of, but that means he had to shoot a whole lot of 12s yeah. to stay in the mix. Yeah, you got to hit some rings to, to come back from a five, so he's he shot was solid. Yeah. It looks big. Really. It is. It is. Is it like Braden, 463. Yeah, <laughs> he shot his way into it. There was only a handful of targets left. He was like on the low end, mix five, six, five, six place. And then he hit some 12s there at the end and just moved himself solidly into, into the mix. That's a nerve wracking spot out there when you're trying to get in the final five because you can't win the tournament unless you're in the shoot down. Right. There's an eight for Benny, 452. So when you know we, they have scores posted on the range, so everybody can look at a scoreboard and kind of see where they're at every five targets. So you know if you're six points off the board, you need to hit some rings to get there. So it can be stressful, especially when right. you get down to the last couple targets and they throw a 50-yard Wolverine at you or something. That's a nervy <laughs> shot. Ten. Ten points for Levi, 470. And Dan the man, McCarthy. <laughs> XT large deer. 
He's so good. 14 points. 466. And just like that, he jumped yeah. back into second place. So, so the eight point lead that Levi was enjoying just got cut in half. Seven points ahead of Brayden Jones, eight points ahead of Ryan Jeffries, and Benny yeah. is having the time of his Braden life. Jones still holding on to that third spot. <laughs> All right. Last arrow. Who do we got shooting what? We should have Levi shooting the last target, so he should be on this deer. Mm -hmm. Dan McCarthy will be finishing up on that panther, I believe. No, he'll be right behind him at the. You mean that Dan's ready? Yeah, I think Dan just rotated to the yeah, Black yeah, Panther, yeah. so and it's a long shot too. I don't know. Right, now, it wouldn't surprise me. Gentlemen, I don't know if he'll right see enough now. detail on that black target to risk shooting a 14. If he does, he'll really put the he'll really put the pressure on that big guy right there. Levi loves hunting deer, so I'm sure he's like that. He's looking at this target. Man, Levi looks awful focused. Good 10 right there, bud. Didn't give anything up. Good look at Braden. Just low right of that upper. That's the longest target. Dan has not shot yet. Mm -mm. So he's four points behind Levi. He needs a 14 here to tie it up. A 12 will get the lead to two. Let's see what Dan decides to do. You can see his thumb working that trigger right there. He oh, went at the 14. He's trying to win this thing. Man, is he trying. Boy, he just eight points. Doesn't have the numbers today. There's a good look at the shot. Boom. Oh, you can see how high that arrow was above and then dropped down in. He needed two more yards to catch the bottom of that yeah. thing. Eight points for Dan. Four. Seventy-four. Yeah. There's Ryan Jeffries. He went for that 14, and he I believe did. he got it. I think he did. Good for Ryan. We're going to see those fat heads come out. I see the kids <laughs> lined up. There'll be they a big ready. cheer. There should be a big yes, cheer with, there this, will. with this call. There we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a 476. That's a big arrow right there for him. Yeah. He's going to go into second place. Ooh, him into second. Only four points behind Levi, so the 14 is still a big factor with the sixth arrow to go. Brayton Jones, it's a good arrow, that long target. Yeah. Just a 10, but 473. So he's currently in fourth. There you see Brayton with Keith Allstrom, another elite. She pro out there. It's a whole different game. Benny was hey, at 452. Really yeah. had no option other than yeah. to try to hit that 14. Down, Good weekend, Benny Barger. Absolutely. Benny's finishing with a 457. Congrats, he's got, congrats on being out there. Yep. He's got all <laughs> kind of family here in the stands. I know they're proud of him. His buddies are proud of him. Oh, there's Levi. Ten Levi's. points for Levi. 480. Okay. The stage is set. 480 for Levi. 476 for Ryan. 474 for Dan. 473 for Braden. So Braden's going to get a shoot first. Yep. Then Dan will shoot second. Ryan will shoot third, and then Levi will get to see what he needs to do. Benny takes home fifth place. Congratulations to him. It's a great weekend for Benny. And now we're going to see what they do here for this sixth and final arrow. They're going to bring out a target. Oh, uh, yep, I see him bringing out the javelina. Yeah. I wonder, seeing those guys shake hands right there makes me think, you know, Dan, he went for it. Yeah. You know, and I love to see a guy go for it. But he shot at two 14s and shot eights to where if, what if he shot at a 12 and, just clipped a 10. So, yeah. you know, him and Levi could be tied really easy right now. So exactly. that's that's how fast this goes. That's how quick it can change. Um, I, I just, a point of all that, I just wonder if Dan looks back and goes, man, I wish I'd have just shot 12s on those. <laughs> you know, at the point, I don't disagree, and I think he made the best decision. But yeah. I wonder if they ever look back and go, I wish I would have done that different. Right. We need to have uh, There we go. Don Bailey.
We're giving a round of applause to longtime tournament director. There he is. He is retiring, but he's coming back. This is in the end of Don Bailey <laughs> here at ASAs. I guarantee you. But he will not be the tournament director. That's going to, that mantle will pass to Scott Parrott, who's a little bit younger. <laughs> It's also Don's 46th wedding anniversary, and his wife's down there in the GPO tent with him. 46th ah. wedding anniversary? Is that 46 what they said? or 47, he said. Wow. Don Bailey's anniversary. His wife is here. I think she's only been at two events ever. That's awesome. She Congrats came out to, to see his last one. Congrats to her for putting up with him for 47 <laughs> years. That's all we got to talk about there. She's a saint. <laughs> Don Bailey is one of the great characters of ASA. He's a good guy. <laughs> he loves to have fun. He loves to pull pranks. I love it when he pulls them on me. <laughs> it's just a good time. He hid my cart one time last year, and he could see me, and I was in a hurry, and I'm walking around I'm like, what? Where the heck did I put that thing? Your golf and cart? I, yeah, my golf cart. And I turn around and look, and there's Don pointing at me, laughing his head off. <laughs> Gotcha. <laughs> he got me. So Braden Jones is one point off the podium in his first shoot down ever, and they've put the target with the tiniest 14 available out in front of him. So I'm curious to see what this youngster does. Yeah. But if he shoots a 12, he goes to 75. He forces McCarthy to hit a ring. So I'm thinking 12. I'm thinking 12 for Braden. 14 is 14's awesome if you hit it, but it's like, oh my gosh, why'd I do that if you miss it? Yeah. As we mentioned, Braden is our 2022 Open Pro Rookie of the Year, 22 years old. I mean, congrats to him on a great season anyway. And to cap it off at the Classic, he makes his first shoot down. Yeah. Good for him. With a shot at a podium. <laughs> I think when okay, archers find themselves the breaking the ice, I talked to him earlier about, man, you broke the ice. They find a different gear, you yeah. know? So, unfortunately for Braden, this is the last tournament of the year, but I could see him making making more shoot downs next year pretty easily. Absolutely. He might spend the winter all right, right, saying, right. all right, I got a taste. Yeah. Yeah. Now yeah. I want it. He got all those good feels and the nerves, and, the, yeah. and this right. is, I'm right. sure his heart rate's up just a little bit right here, but he's shooting good. You never know it. He doesn't show much no, emotion. No, he doesn't. <laughs> Let's see what he decides to do. I'm thinking 12, but he may go for it. He's holding good. Yeah. Oh, just left. So I'm not sure what he went for Straight there. Left. He's between. He may have shot at that 14, be just low right of it. Yeah. yeah. Good weekend, kid. Yes, sir. It's a poke at that Alvalina. Hey, yeah. That's <laughs> he could tell when it hit. No, nope. yep. I could just read that. Good weekend, Braden. 481 for him. So Ryan Jeffries needs he needs an eight to be in front of – because if he shoots a five, Braden will beat him on bone strings. Dan McCarthy, yeah, he needs a. Oh, Dan's up. My yeah. bad. I'm I'm looking at Ryan's score. Dan's up. I'm sorry. Ready? So he needs, he needs a an eight. He needs an eight. Put him at 82. Right. He needs we'll to be an eight, eight or yeah. better to move in front of Braden. And I, I mean, he doesn't really have a great shot at Levi, so I don't know if the 14 is worth it. But he's Dan McCarthy. He, he probably, does what he wants. He probably goes for it here. Boy, it's quiet. Dead quiet. That's a long hold that for him. That is long. Let that down start over, Dan. There yeah. you go. Right on cue. He must have You're a mic. In his ear. Yeah, he must have a <laughs> mic on. <laughs> he held that way too long. Well, he held it longer than normal. Normally, and normally yeah. if you get past your 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 routine bad things happen he's got 15 seconds on the clock so plenty of time he's aiming at it that's why he was struggling with it just, <sighs> just under, under it. it darn it 
What a good shot at yep. it, though. He knows he judges these targets so close. That's yeah. why he gets so Dan close McCarthy. to all those rings, because he's almost dead on with his number. Eight for Dan so an 82. Two. So he will bump Braden. Yep. So Braden right will now. finish fourth so far, barring yep. disaster, mm -hmm. but right now. Ryan. Fourth. Dan looks to be third. Let's so see what Ryan does. If here. Ryan right. shoots an eight, Ryan. he'll get second at least if he shoots a 14 levi would have to hit a bonus ring yeah. to win a 10 would tie them and then levi Fine. would win on bonus ring so he really needs a 14 to have a chance to right. win this we'll his winning. first shoot no. down i mean a podium looks good on your first shoot down so if he shoots you go a, for it all yeah if he shoots an 80 goes to 84 he probably gets second if he shoots a five he'll go to fourth so it's a risky arrow yeah. Center 10. Good decision. 486. Yep. Oh, Take second place in the first shoot. So Absolutely. Le Levi needs eight points to win this tournament. 10 for Ryan Jeffers. That moves him to 486. And a solid second place. So yep. Levi Morgan for Texas. So that's eight. going to be Ryan. All right, Levi. Again, Levi's a shooter, but we're looking like Ryan in second, Dan McCarthy in third. You need eight to win. And we'll start your one minute. And this, yeah. I'm going to be curious because this is an easy shot for Levi Morgan, but he loves to win so much. I bet his hand is still shaking. Look at that little. He yelled at me for talking about that. I can't talk about oh, that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I won't bring it up. Eight to win. Center sorry, team. man. Good shot, big go. guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good 10. 490. 490. He didn't really that, yell at me, but he did yeah. ask me. He's like, what are you talking about my handshaking for, Darren? <laughs> <laughs> That's his second win of the season for Levi. There's big cheers for Ryan there making his podium. Good for him. Congratulations. First, Ryan Jeffrey. Second, Dan McCarthy. Third, Mr. Braden Jones had a good weekend. And he ended up in fourth, but he shot great. Absolutely. We're going to get Levi over here to ask him about that. We won't ask him about his handshake. It was steady, solid as a rock. Solid man. as a rock, yeah. We won't even bring it up. <laughs> but that, what that goes to is he always talks about it. He wants to win oh, so yeah. bad when he's out there. Yeah. Just loves it so much. So here he's got those headphones on. Levi Morgan, second win of the season. How does that feel? I don't even, I can't even put it into words. You know, you come out here, I've, I've been shooting the ASA since I was 10 years old, and you would think these wins would get easier, and they, um, they just don't. Um, I think I want it worse every time I come here, and it gets harder every time. These guys are unbelievable, and um, the good Lord's blessed me more than I could ever deserve, and uh, you never know when it's going to be your last one, and I guess I've been realizing that more and more lately, so I just I couldn't be happier. Levi, you've been in contention and won so many Shooter of the Years, and this year with some family things, we know you were unable to make a couple of events. What's the difference now where in Shooter of the Year wasn't on the line? You weren't having to battle so hard for that. What's that feel like out there? Yeah, well, it, it definitely was the first time in maybe 16 years that I didn't have to worry about that, and um, I was able to shoot a little more loose, you know, and not care as much which sometimes can help like the last few targets today they were all bombs and i i, I could go for them you yeah. know and i didn't have to worry about losing shooter of the year and i hit those last two or three rings on the range which ended up probably winning me the tournament so it made a huge difference not having to worry about that well hats off big guy congrats on another great weekend congratulations levi thanks guys all right, Levi Morgan is our Open Pro champion here. Next up, Darren, we're going to know the distances. Known Pro, we'll be right back.
Welcome back, everybody, to the Delta McKenzie ASA Classic, Coleman, Alabama, our last division of the evening, known pro Darren Christianberry. There's our leaderboard. Jeff Rainey was your winner last month in Metropolis. He's back on top of the 452. Robert Householder has a multi-time shooter of the year in known pro. He's back in there with a 450. Michael Holbert, young stud, 448. Dane Johnston, he's a he's won more than one time out here in the known pro, 446. And then Stefan Hansen, the baby-faced assassin at 444. <laughs> This should be a good one. <laughs> Nathan Brooks, bring him out. All right, for our final event of the 2022 ASA Classic will be your known pro division. And in fifth place, from a little place called Denmark, shooting for PSC, Stefan Hansen. And in fourth place, from Laota, Indiana, shooting for Matthews, Dane Johnson. And in third place, from Fort Wayne, Indiana, shooting for PSE, Michael Holbert. And your second place qualifier from Millbrook, Alabama. Shooting for Matthews, Robert Householder. And your first place qualifier from Goddard, Kansas. Shooting for Matthews, Jeff Rainey. All right, Darren, we saw the range finders out there. Tell the folks at home how far these targets are. Yeah, known pro. That means these guys are ranging with a range finder. That Black Panther that we talked about being so long is 49 yards. The Wolverine is 28 yards. The Cinnamon Bear is at 50. The Russian Boar is 37. And that deer down there that we saw, McCarthy 14, is 43 yards away. That just lets you know. How impressive that shooting was earlier. You know, folks who were hitting those bonus rings, especially at 49 and 50 yeah, yards. Yeah, half a football field. There's a good look at Stefan Hansen right there from Denmark. This kid's yeah. got some game. One of our international shooters. He can shoot a bow. Oh, and he went 14 right off the bat. And we should mention these known pro guys. We're going to see them aiming at a lot of bonus rings, yeah, like Dane right Johnson. There. Dane right there. Johnson making a move. Dane won at Fort Benning this year. <laughs> Robert Householder hits these the guys, 12. Yeah, these guys are just set, they're setting their sight within a tenth of a yard. They know exactly how far these targets are. And they are swinging for the fences. Yeah, Holbert on a 50-yard bear. I think he was shooting at that 14. Good for him. We talked about that earlier. There's a 10 for Jeff Rainey on the, uh, on the Panther. 462 for Jeff. We're going to see some moving and some shaking out yeah. here. At least 214 shot on that first arrow out there. Robert Householder, two time shooter of the year in this class. Yet this is his first shoot down this year. Yeah, it's crazy how competitive this class is. 14 puts him at 464. He just took the lead. It's crazy how competitive. And we talked about, you know, Shooter of the Year titles. Kyle Douglas is Shooter of the Year for the five events that he got to keep for his Shooter of the Year title. He averaged 49 up per event. That's crazy. 49 up. 80 would be perfect. Yeah. Would be all 40 12s. Yeah. Good 10 right there. Six points behind the these guys know coming in, you know, you can't be like, okay, I want to no. see what everybody else is doing. No. This is one where you're like, if I should shoot at it, you better shoot at it yeah. because everybody else is going to. And we've witnessed that. Yep. There's Dane, as we mentioned. 14 Fort points. That's a 460. So he's jumped up into third right now, went from fourth to third. Dane looks pretty determined. Yes, he does. Another Indiana boy. Michael's from Fort Wayne. Bunch of Indiana folks out there in these shootouts tonight. 
Let's Anger move to the next starting four fifty two. Let's look at the board real quick. Our leader now is Robert Householder at four sixty four and twenty eight bonus. Yeah, and you talk about a guy who Seven, really Jeff doesn't Rennie have this game where he lives. Stefan Hansen. So he Johnson, doesn't get to work at it like and everyone else does, but he's such a good archer. That he can come out here and hang with the big boys. Yeah, I believe Stefan bought a house and is remodeling a house in Cancun, Mexico. Mexico, yeah, yeah. His fiance or wife, I don't know if they're married yet. She's from Mexico. And right. That's where he currently resides. He's internationally, he still competes for Denmark, but yeah. Good look at Robert Householder there. Alabama boy right there. Super nice guy. Yep. He looks pretty focused as well. Yes, he does. He's saying, what's yeah, up? Yeah, he's like, what are we go? waiting for? Hey, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. Start right, my one Jim, minute. We'll start your one minute now. There, there he is. Go. There's more of that four fletch craze. I talk about that a lot. Yeah. Four veins on his arrow there. That has caught on this year like crazy. Probably because of Tim Gillingham. I wonder if he called up or. Oh, Dane didn't like whatever he shot oh, at. Oh, he shot it to 14 oh, left for a five. Five left. That's, that, those are so hard to overcome. Yeah, in the shoot down, that is rough. Right. There's a good look over the shoulder of Stefan. Stefan Hansen currently. He went oh, into 14. That's in the right area. Oh, just over it. Eight, Eight points. Him at 460. Mm -hmm. Next up, our That's so hard to because they have to shoot at him. Yeah. And if you miss a couple, it's just like, man, now I'm climbing a hill that I can't get to the top of. It's Jeff Rainey on 28 yard Wolverine. He smashes that. Puts him at 476. 14 to Jeff Rainey. That's big. Yeah. That's, that's a fairly close target that's one these guys will murder yeah they all better plan on hitting that 14. Robert Householder up next on the longest target the 50 yard bear 50 is the max distance there's a little wiggle room they may get to 51. he did call up he got that 12. 76 so he jumps up there and ties rainy Next up, Mike Holbert. Michael Holbert looks like he went for that 14, but I think he's a little All right, bit. Michael. He's got oh, it. Oh, no, he got it. That kid's got game. 472. This is only Michael's second shoot down ever. He made the first one in Foley where he finished second, which was our first event of the season. Now he finishes up at the Classic back in the shoot down. There's Dane's five, 465 for Dane. That one hurts. And that forces him now. I mean, he's yep. got to shoot at 14s the rest of the way. He has to. So I believe we are tied at the top mm -hmm. here. Jeff Rainey, Robert Householder, both at 476. Michael Holbert, 72. Dane Johnson, 65. And Stephen Hansen, 60. And this will be our third arrow. The rain has stopped. That's not an issue now. Little breeze, but it's not bad. If anything, it feels good. It does. <laughs> I've been told all my life, PJ, that the older you get, the faster time goes by. It's almost August 1st, and ASA season okay, is over um, after these next four or five arrows. It's crazy how fast right, this year's so going. I cannot believe now. it. That means tomorrow we can start practicing for next year. <laughs> I was going to say, I bet next year comes around pretty yeah, fast, there's too. There's a good look at Rainey. Yeah. So steady. That big boy's got some game. If he called up or I He's close believe to it, he got it. it. And again, that's at 50 yards. Here goes Dane. He's moving over to the 49-yard Panther, second longest target. I bet he shoots at the 14. No, oh, he went at the upper. Off. Hmm. Okay. So those black targets, uh, Darren, we talked at some of the uh, earlier divisions. And they're tough to aim at. They are. I mean, you can see there, you can see some light, dark spots on it, some muscle definition. So you do have something to aim off of, but it's not perfect. No. You, can't, you can't see the arrow holes in there. Yeah. 
the deer, that tan color is just a little bit easier to aim at. Mm -hmm. You can get lost in that black. Your pin moves around a little bit. We used to shoot a pronghorn antelope. It had a white oh, patch yeah. in it. You could really <laughs> see the ring in that, dude. I think. There we go, Stefan Hansen. 474. That's 28 yard Wolverine. That Wolverine is a tricky tie. 28, it's not bad, but at 48, it's, oh. it's, it's, it's rough. I shot that with Chris Perkins yesterday. It was a 47 yards and in horrible lighting. Mm -hmm. We got tens, but it was lucky. Yeah, boy, that's a close arrow right there. Mm. Wow. And it's, you can see from there, it looks like it's just wide to me, but from up above or below, you might get a different read. Yeah, look at all those perforations. And it, we'll say the judges, if they can't definitively Service see it, yep, they're, they're going to give it to the shooter. Points. Jeffrey, Jeffrey the four, 88. We hear a lot of folks, oh, that was in, that was out. Mm -hmm. It's different when you're there, and those arrow holes, uh, or those... Uh, Holes that are made in the construction. Yeah. That obscures the line. All that comes into play. There's another close arrow. That looks a little more defined looks, to me. Yeah, right. Something paradise or something. Let's see what we got. Sandra Bullock. Ten points. Ten, yeah. 486. So he goes back into second now, two points behind Rainey. And Michael shot at the 14 on the deer. Looks like Don's got an eight card ready. Yeah. Straight right of it. Wow. Good effort, Michael. 480. 480. So he's hanging on to third right now. Rainey's back in first. So we're almost, other than Dane and Stefan, we're exactly like we started. They flip flop by one point. Temperature's actually pretty good out here now. Uh, yeah. Maybe that this is front, nice. Yeah, took some of that humidity away. There's just a little bit of a breeze, so wind's not really a factor. Uh, you know, the pro shoot down, this ends their weekend tonight, but we should mention tomorrow, amateurs will be back out here on their range, mm -hmm. finishing their weekends as well. So it continues on through Sunday. Arrow number four coming up. All right, Mike, are you ready? Jeff looks pretty focused. Okay. We'll start your one minute now. Jeff's actually been shooting some of the IBO events where you have to yep. judge as well, and he's not a bad mm -mm. he's not a bad unknown shooter. No, he's he's not. a good archer. Yeah. Got a strong indoor game too. Got a good mental game. And he just gave himself another fourteen, I wow. believe. Uh, mm. low on that one. That's not going to help him much right there, darn no. it. Those fives are so rough when these guys are pounding the 14 yeah. rings. All right, first up, a five. 485. 45 for Michael Holbert. That changes up the race for third place right there. Let's look at Dane. What did he do? Uh, he smashed of course. it. I believe everyone has hit that 14 so far in this division. Mm -hmm. That's going to take Dane to a 489. He has jumped ahead of Michael Holbert now. Next up, Stephen Hansen on the ground wire. There's Dane's dad standing there with him, mm -hmm. always with him through the weekends, out there on the lines. Stefan went at that 14 on that bear. Yes, he did. Straight right up. I wonder if there's a little bit of left to right breeze out there. Yeah. Those guys have hit right. And that's, I won't say unusual, but it's just it didn't feel like there was enough wind to move those arrows that far. Right. 482. All right. And this is Jeff This is Jeff. He got that. He one. sure did. 
That puts him at 502, is that correct? I believe it is. Wow. If you break the 500 mark, 500 point mark at an ASA, you've shot well. Uh, we still got at least one to go. Yeah. <laughs> Householder steps up and smashes one. That puts him at 500. 500. This is getting good. You can see Barry Langston next to him with that Archery Unlimited jersey on. That's where Robert Householder works in Alabama. You can go into that archery shop, and there's Robert Householder helping you out with your bow. He knows what he's doing. Yes, he does. This is your fifth arrow. When you go to the 10 points, we'll go to a final arrow. These archery pro shops, some of them just have such a wealth of knowledge that if you can get in there, boy, and take advantage of it. You can learn the game, you can elevate your game, whatever level you're at, you can really advance in the sport of archery. I wonder if Householder 14 and this deer changed Rainey's plans, because I, I think Jeff was just probably going to shoot it at 12, but. He may have to try to 14 this thing now. Good look at him right there. No, nope. he shot 10. center 10. He was obviously shooting at a 12. Good look at Dane. Dane, that's a close. Can't see where the other side of his arrow is. Robert it looks like Householder went at a 14 on the Panther. Oh, man. Yet, folks. There's a good look at him. Where did that arrow land? Let's see. It's, it's in the right area. It is. He shot at it. Oh, oh just under. Wow. Mm. So that's 508. Ah, that's a four point swing there. Jeff is going to have a four point lead. Now. Yeah, Jeff shot a 10, so he gained two extra points yeah. right there. Michael Holbert on that 28 yard. Wolverine. Is he going to keep the streak alive? Yes, he Five is. for five. 14. That's a 499. Rainey's 10. I put him at 512, and that'll bump Michael out of the final arrow. Let's see what Dane's got. Yeah, if he called upper, it's close. I'm looking at it. I believe he, he's yeah, got it. He got that. Well, that's a big arrow there because he's yep. going to go ahead of Holbert with that 12. That's going to take him to 501. 501, yes. And with Rainey at 512, oh, he's going to be out by mm -hmm. one point. Even Dane. Dane won't. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Dane won't be out in the final arrow. Michael won't be in the final arrow. This is Stefan with a 14. He got the 14. 496. He will not be in the final. So the final arrow is going to be Jeff Rainey and Robert Householder. And then Dane Johnston's going to finish in third. Yeah, Stefan Hansen will be our will finish in fifth. Michael Holbert in fourth. Dane Johnson third. Jeff Rainey, 512 with 30 bonus rings. So we're going to get us eight. We're going to get to see a 14 shot at here. Yep. Yeah, Robert. Uh, he doesn't have any other choice. Mm -mm. They shot solid out there. Yeah. A couple mistakes by some guys, but man, it's easy to do. I think it goes fast out there. They are going to shoot the. Cinnamon bear, we are told. Now, where do they have them shoot it from? I it's mean, already 50 yeah, yards. Yeah, it's already 50. The only thing they're going to do is make it a little easier for them if they move it up. You can see that plug where it makes that corner around that 14. Yeah. That's a really good aiming reference on that target, so they'll have no trouble figuring out where to put their pin. It was just so far, 50 yards trying to hit that 50 cent piece. It's a right. really risky shot, so you didn't see a lot of guys shoot at that 14 there. Yeah. Nope. But when you have to, you have to. Mm -hmm. Looks like he moved it up about five yards. Yeah. Brown bear. The brown bear? Shooting the brown bear. Bailey says brown bear. 
Roberts at 508, and he's going to shoot first if he 14s it. There he is. Tip of the hat there from Don Bailey. Set his last pin. This is his last target. He still has to call it, so. <laughs> I forget when he said he started here, but it was in the early 90s. He's been doing it a while. Oh, yeah, a couple years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Both of those boys weren't even born yet. I wonder how many targets they've set in their time here. Well, they set 300 plus every weekend. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yes, they do. Six or seven weekends a year for 20, 30 years. 30 years. Yeah. yeah. They've set their fair share of targets. Yep. You ready? We'll start you one minute now. Mr. Householder needs a 14 to put any kind of pressure on Jeff. 14 or bust. Oh. Just over. tall for an eight. Yep, he knew it when it hit. So puts him in a 516. So Jeff does have to hit foam. Yep. He has to shoot right. it. Jeff needs five That's points to win this Robert event. Who's in the 516. All right, Jeff. You now at four points. That's got to feel good, but come on, Jeff. Shoot You're that 14. <laughs> Let's give the crowd something to cheer about here. All right. Whenever you get down the last minute, we'll give you your one minute. You I think seven. he shoots at it. I think so, too. Really? He would have He's to pretty confident. Yeah, yeah. He, would have to, he would have to make a pretty big boo-boo to go over the back of this thing. He just yeah. needs to hit it somewhere to win. I think a man with his skill set can hit this thing. Yeah, why not? Boom. And he did. Inside <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> Nice yes. shooting, Jeff Rainey. <laughs> oh, wow. Congratulations, Jeff. Way to end it. That's a great shot. There it is. 4 5 26 is his final score. Second win of the season, third win ever in the known pro division. We're going to be seeing him. Yeah. He's young. He's good. We didn't even call him his nickname. They, his buddies call him the Panda. The Panda, I did, I right. Didn't, I didn't even mention that. I forgot that. about that. He might, he might need a new nickname, some kind of royalty nickname, if he keeps shooting like that. Exactly. Here he comes getting the headset on there. All right, he's got it there. Jeff Rainey, I want to ask you two questions. I'll ask them together. How does it feel taking the win and inside out 14 when you didn't even need to? Oh, man. I, <laughs> you know, I had a little more to say the last time, a little more speechless this time. Um, <laughs> to go back-to-back -back classics, back-to-back -back wins here in one of the toughest divisions in archery, um, it's so hard to dominate this class. And I'm, I'm not saying I've dominated it, but, you know, to come in here and get back-to-back -back wins is just special to me. Jeff, you were, uh, I was bragging on you a little while ago that you've been playing the unknown game a little bit. You're a pretty good archer. Your indoor <laughs> game's good. Your 3D game's good. ASA season's over, and you just seem like you got this momentum. Back-to-back -back is super hard to do in this class. Yeah, I, uh, I really enjoy shooting unknown. It's something I wish I was a little better at, but to be honest, I didn't put enough work in judging. Um, something I may continue to play with in the future. Um, but, yeah, I would like to have a few more tournaments with the way these last two have gone. Yeah, for sure. Well, man, you've got some serious game out there. Congrats on back-to-back, -back and congrats on another classic. Thanks, Aaron. Congratulations. Thanks, BJ. Jeff. Great win there for Jeff Rainey, closing out the season. Folks, thanks for joining us this season. Darren Christianberry, Nathan Brooks, appreciate you guys as always. And everybody watching at home, thanks for joining us this season. We will be back next year.